when you go to school to no air conditioning, when you live next to vacant houses, when you see your friend's parents struggling with addiction, uh, you have to make a choice early in life. You're either going to accept that that's how life has to be for you and people like you, or you're going to do something to change it. And that's the route that I chose. We are a city of people that, yes, we're a little gritty. Yes, we have a chip on our shoulder because of what people think about us. Yes, we will talk about ourselves, but we will not allow anyone to say that we are not a city that is much more than some image. You're now in a city that is welcoming to small businesses, that wants to help to support you. And there is nothing more powerful than a group of Baltimoreans dedicated to something. America has always been associated with making it. But is that opportunity available to all? This is what it looks like to be made in America. If you want just a cookie cutter, Baltimore is not the city for you. But if you want to discover new artists, taste amazing food, then Baltimore is where you need to be heading right now. Baltimore's really small, but it has a really huge impact. When you see it on the news, you see a lot of the bad stuff, but there's a lot of great stuff going on here. Like a hidden gem. Whatever your thing is, you're going to find it. Like an atomic collision of all things American in one place. And I love it. Hey! How are you? Great, it's good to see you. My name is Q Ragsdale, and I help small businesses to scale. It's my job to help people see that magic in themselves and to unlock that magic so that they can use it. Sierra! Hey! What's up? <laughs> At the root of it, I see it as helping these businesses cross the digital divide. There are really important digital skills that these business owners need in order to survive, to thrive, and remain relevant as we're in the midst of this economical shift right now. Looking at Baltimore for like precursors for what is to come in America, I think is very important. With Baltimore being 62% African-American, we have a really unique opportunity here to prove to the nation that diverse thought, that the right resources, and a sense of collaboration can really change the world. Baltimore historically has been a city that had a lot of manufacturing jobs that have transitioned out. And now what you're seeing is like an artisan renaissance. People who are actually making things. I am Mayor Brandon Scott, the 52nd mayor of the great city of Baltimore, also known as Charm City. We can no longer operate a city where we think that one big company is gonna save us from a job perspective. If we're going to grow Baltimore's economy the right way, it's gonna be through small businesses. By investing in small businesses that are located here, ran by people that lived here, that are hiring people from those communities so that those dollars stay within our community. When I pass different businesses and I see a business that I feel like should be open and maybe isn't, then I'm asking myself, I'm like, I wonder what their challenge is. I wonder what they need. People of color owned businesses dropped at an alarming rate during the pandemic. And so many businesses who didn't already have that digital strategy and weren't able to pivot, they were left behind in the digital divide. The digital divide existed long before COVID-19 showed up on our doorstep. And we know that it's helped to expand this wealth gap in our country because everything is on the internet now. Without us closing that gap, we will be creating another class of people that can't reach their full potential. And that's something that we shouldn't even be seeing as possible in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. Baltimore was the first city in America where redlining was really put into place and practiced and codified. You know, there's maps on the other side of our space where you can see exactly how neighborhoods were determined to be white neighborhoods or black neighborhoods and allowed white families to accrue wealth over multiple generations. And so black families and brown families who were locked out of that system 
started behind and then weren't able to catch up. Even now, when you look at the ways that everything from school investment to trash pickup to, I mean, any name a system, you know, the ways that neighborhoods that are five miles apart, people are literally dying 20 years earlier. I think entrepreneurship both struggles with some of those same patterns of disinvestment and investment and the ways that that shakes out along lines of race and class. And also, it can be a way for people to jump out of that and kind of create the world that they want to see rather than having to just accept the world as it is. Thank you. Good to see you. Yes, you too. There are definitely disproportionate issues that are faced by communities of color, which extends into business communities as well. And so it's my goal to take a further look into how you can use business models to create social impact. How you don't have to just engage in capitalism from a take-only perspective. That yes, you can make money by also creating a platform to allow other people to stand on as well. The GoDaddy program is helping these business owners get access to the web hosting products that they need, but more importantly, the education so that they can actually leverage these tools to increase business. We are doing a standalone Empower Baltimore class, so we're really excited. We have some of our GoDaddy team in town, and we are going to work with the participants on some video marketing strategies. <laughs> good evening, everybody. It's so good hey. to see y'all back. How are we doing today? Good. good, good. I believe that social entrepreneurs are people who know how to use a business to create social impact. And Big Mama did that. So when I share this story, I always start off by saying that my big mama was magic. She is my dad's great aunt and was like the grandmother figure to my dad growing up. So this is the apartment building that big mama owned and the beauty school and the beauty shop was in the basement. People would come to her and she would help them get bank accounts. And you had to be affluent to have um, a bank account as a black person back then. She'd co-sign for car loans. She helped to house students at the local HBCU. She would create things in a way that where she was able to help other people. And uh, this is why I do what I do, just because Big Mama was pushed out of business. These are articles talking about how they were trying to basically steal the business license from all of the black cosmetology school owners. And they got her on like a really silly infraction. And so it's just, I can help business owners the way I wish I could have gone back in time to help Big Mama. And then I feel like it's me carrying her legacy forward. So we've been working on our websites and some branding and some stuff, right? Yeah. So video marketing is one of the top growing marketing trends. Many, many of the people that we were working with like didn't have websites and I was noticing where that closed the door to some kind of opportunity, like either they didn't get into a market they were applying to, they didn't get a grant they were applying to, they didn't get something. So when GoDaddy came to us with this partnership, you know, right away I was like, I've seen that need, you know, I know that people need support on this. One of the biggest challenges of being an entrepreneur is definitely marketing and trying to get yourself out there, especially when you have no to little budget. You are kind of trying to figure out what's going to be really right for your community, but also your business as well. Okay, this is going to sound a little bit cheesy. Uh, my role is essentially getting to educate entrepreneurs on social media, domains, websites, and it's been one of my favorite roles I've ever had. I don't know, just something switches on and you're like, I want to connect with you. I want to hang out with you. I want to learn everything about your business. So. For me, it's more about building that connection with them and also making some friends along the way too. We are the marketers, we are the people making a product, we are the people right. trying to get customers and, mm -hmm. and being parents and husbands and wives. So that's our challenge is being able to manage all of those roles. My advice to other business owners is do it scared. Whatever you're afraid of, do it anyway. I mean, if you don't do it, you'll never get it. 
But if you try, you might. We're not here to be perfect. We're just here to get some progression. You're learning, you're progressing. I wanna see all that work that you put in as well. That's what makes you stand out as a business. It was almost like being in group therapy. And you could just feel like we all knew the pain. We all knew the glories. We all knew the sense of elation and the sense of dread. Because we all had been there and we were all there to help each other, to elevate each other. When you're talking about starting a small business in the city, that literally you and I are sitting in the building, two floors down from when the first redlining legislation was passed. When you think about the history of that, especially in the neighborhoods where most of our small businesses are located, where uh, those neighborhoods were disinvested in for generations, where you had this big white flight and you had these neighborhoods being starved for resources. For me, sitting in the seat that it actually happened in, that's about working together and united front to make this a new day and a new way forward for Baltimore. This group is a hungry group. <laughs> I know that they're really gonna take this knowledge and run with it. <laughs> wow, Made in America to me is a, oh, that's a loaded question. Made in America means jobs in America to me. <laughs> it's just that. Everyone wants to feel like they're serving their community. No matter what is stacked up against you, you're gonna push through because that's what America is. That's just how we have to show up, no matter where you come from. I couldn't be where I am without the community and the network that I've built around myself. And so maybe if I could reframe Made in America to talk about like the communities that built me up, then I would be happy to wear that tag. Baltimore is the, the best American city uh, because we represent the true spirit of this country. Uh, that you don't give up, that you keep fighting, that you push, that you pull everyone ahead to be the better you. On the next episode of Made in America. It's hard to pitch your business, especially when you need the money. You can have a business that's making $350,000 a year and sustain a good life.